Hello, and welcome to the Kitty Cat Lane. My name is Lane, and today I thought I'd try making a little PNG tuber model. Feel free to follow me along if you'd like to. The program that I'm going to be using is made by Kaya Kairos. I had played around with a similar PNG tuber program before in the past called Vieto Tube Mini by Omewe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I just want to say I thought it was super cute and very fun. But I more recently started seeing stuff on Twitter or X with a newer, more complex PNG tuber program. So I just had to give it a try. When I went to download it, I discovered that, to my surprise, the PNG Tuber Plus program is free. It's on Steam right now, and if you wanted to try the other PNG Tuber, Vieto Tube, it is on itch.io. It is also free, but you can leave a tip for Omewe if you'd like to. But today I'm going to be trying the PNG Tuber Plus. This program is fantastic, so thank you Kaya Kairos for all the work that you've put into this incredible tool, and if any of you are watching this and are able, I encourage you to support Kaya Kairos by checking them out on Twitter or X, where you can be updated on whatever cool thing they end up doing next. So with all that said and done, let me show you what all I had to do to make this model, and what all you'll have to do if you'd like to do the same. Step 1, making the art for the model. You could make this super simple or super complex. If this is your first model, I'd recommend starting off with something a little more on the simple side until you get the hang of how the program works. Especially if you're not too sure what all you'd like to do with the model. It's not too hard, but it just looks overwhelming when you first open it up and see all these sliders that you might not understand how they work. I thought that making a half-body model of my persona would be a little more fun and just complex enough for me to experiment with what all I can do with this program. Besides, I'm not quite ready to make all of the fun expressions for my YouTube self-sona yet. But maybe in the future. As you can see, I made a sketch of what I was going to draw, and once I was ready to do the outline, I started separating everything that I wanted to be able to move separately as well as making the eyes and mouth their own layers with an open and closed version of each. I also made the clothing on separate layers so I can change her outfits and stuff later. Halloween is just around the corner, so I want to be able to easily make outfit changes. Just in case. I didn't record my whole screen when drawing this, but here's how I ended up separating the layers. I also cut the wings, ears, and arms into separate layers so that they could move on their own more naturally. I made folders for each piece with the correct label, with a layer for the line art and one for the colors. That way, if I want to add shading later, I won't have to worry about working around the line art. This also helps with being able to export the layers correctly too. Speaking of exporting, part two. Exporting the layers of the model and importing them into the program. Once all of the art was done, I made the background transparent and one folder at a time saved a duplicate as a PNG. I labeled them all a little better than I labeled the files in the art program and labeled the left wing, right wing, left arm, right arm, and so on. I exported everything to a new folder on my PC so that it was all together and easy to drop into PNG Tuber Plus. As you can see, we have a nice little sample model to give us an idea of what our finished model might look like. If you don't have a microphone built into your computer, you'll want to connect one so you can get the settings adjusted appropriately to be able to get your model's movements worked out. Unlike a VTuber model, it's not going to follow you around, it's just going to be voice activated basically. So the microphone is really important. Click in the window and you'll be able to select your microphone by clicking on the microphone icon and adjusting the volume sensitivity with the bottom slider and the model's reaction sensitivity with the slider above it. You can also adjust the size of your model by holding the control button and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Now, to actually edit the model, you'll want to click on the pencil icon in the corner. If you click on a part of the model, you'll see it become highlighted and the options will appear on the side. If you're following along with your own model, and this is your first time even opening the program, I'd suggest exploring what all of these sliders do before importing your model. But if you're ready to import it, go ahead and delete the old model and hit the add new sprite button. 
Now hit the escape button to open your program's files. You can now drag and drop or even copy and paste that folder that has all of your model parts into it into this window. Exit out of there and you should be able to hit the new sprite button again and open the new folder. You'll have to open each piece and it might just pile up like a big mess, but we can rearrange the layers by clicking on the part or using the scroll wheel and pressing Q or E to push and pull the piece to a higher or lower layer. Once everything is in the right order, it's time for step three, giving your model some life. First things first, you can select your mouth and click on the first X'd out box in the settings. This tells the program that that layer is the mouth when it's closed. Hit it again and it tells the program that the mouth is open. The box next to it does the same thing, but for the eyes. So go ahead and mark your open mouth as open mouth, your closed mouth as closed mouth, your open eyes as open eyes, and your closed eyes as closed eyes. Of course, if you don't want your model to blink or they speak telepathically or something, then you don't have to use these. But for an even more lifelike appearance, I wanted to make my model move a little bit idly. Kind of like she's breathing. That's what the X and Y frequency and amplitude are for. X is for movement left and right, and Y is for movement up and down. It's just like Minecraft. Except that it's not. <laughs> amplitude controls how much movement there is, and frequency controls how quickly the movement is. We can also give our models some bounce when they talk by adjusting the squash slider and bounce slider at the top. You can really go wild with this if you want to put the slider at the top really high. It's fun playing around with the squash and using the drag slider to slow the bounce down to give the illusion of weight to parts of your model. You'll also notice the rotational slider and the section with the circle and rotational maximum and minimum sliders. I mainly use these on the arms, wings, and ears since they're on either side of my model and that way when they bounce they can move separately in a way that looks natural with the body. With any of these parts, you can click on the link button up top to link the layers of your model together. And I believe that it just makes them squash in sync, but I just adjusted things separately and manually for my model, so I'm not as familiar with that. And if you need to move any part of your model around, you can just use WASD to nudge it to the right place. I had to do it just a little bit with the hair parts to make the movement flow a little bit better. And all the way down here at the bottom of the options are our costume toggle slots. I don't have a costume, but I can take off my necklace for you. So if I'm on my necklace layer and I click on box number two, when I exit the edit mode, I can press two on my keyboard and it now shows her without the necklace. I don't really need that right now, but in case any of you are planning on making any costumes, that's basically how that works. You could also do that if you wanted to maybe have the arms in a different position or make a different expression. You would just need to go onto whichever layer you're changing and just hit the button one through whatever button you'd like to change. Now, one more thing you can do with this that I've not had the time to finish troubleshooting yet is the animation stuff. I tried to animate a simple heart above her head, but whenever I tried to set the animation stuff, it would just cut it in half and display it in a weird way. It might just be me not understanding how to use it, but I've played around with it for a bit to try and get it to work and I just can't seem to figure it out. It might be a bug, but I'm blaming it on my lack of understanding for the time being. I'll mess around with it a little more later. Hopefully I'll get it to work, and if I do, I'll update you, but until then, no animations for me. But overall, I think that this model turned out pretty good for a first try. If you want to give it a go, but it looked a little too complicated for you, try using the Vito tube. It basically just takes your model and you can have the blink effect and the mouth open and close effect and it'll bounce you around a little bit, but it doesn't have all of these sliders that might be confusing for someone who hasn't tried anything like this before. Then whenever you're ready for something a little more challenging, definitely check out PNG Tour Plus. Some of the video footage was from me learning it as I was doing it, and some of it was taken after the fact to try and give a more clear demonstration of what the features do instead of just showing me sliding things around until I thought it looked good. Truthfully, I was feeling a little burnt out before I made this. 
I got sick last week and I was also trying to do Inktober. I got to day 10, which was the most consistent I've ever been with Inktober, so yay me! But it just made me remember why I didn't really like Inktober. It wasn't really what I wanted to draw, it was just drawing whatever I was supposed to draw. I don't know. So I think that doing this was just the thing I needed to get me excited to draw again. Anyway, thank you all so very much for taking a walk down the kitty cat lane with me. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and here's the secret kitty of the day. Bye.